Super Robo Tyson Alpha 3! Take 3! It's your boy Zap, King of the Giant Robots, and welcome back to Super Robot Wars Alpha 3! Wherein, in the previous two takes, audio issues were abound. The first time was my microphone that works on my headset. A setting changed, but now it no longer works consistently. Alas. The second audio issue was somehow in my battle of trying to get audio issues fixed, I desynced or disconnected the desktop or recording audio from working. So picking up in the middle of a grumpy episode led to hype moments without game audio. Well, let's go shoot a robot. Now I am still a little congested, there may be coughing and throat clearing that I don't remember to mute. I apologize in advance. <laughs> Over at Gibraltar, Myung is having another beef with Marge, who claims to have found a good subject with which to improve Sharon's AI. Now, almost a complete self-sufficient entity, the real Sharon will be debuting in three days' time. Young wonders if she, the fake Sharon, will get kicked to the curb, but Marge says that he still has plans for her to stick around as Sharon's producer, and as a backup should anything happen to Sharon herself. After all, it's entirely Young's doing that the virtual idol snarfed up all the fan love that formerly belonged to Min May. Marge says that this gives Myung an obligation to watch Sharon's growth until the very end, but Myung is more bothered by Sharon being turned into a Zaf propaganda vehicle. Marge says that though Zaf provided essential technology to make Sharon complete, and before long, Myung will get to see Sharon with her own eyes from the best seat in the house. So after three games, the Robot Wars producers and writers have decided that now is the time to wrap up the Macross Plus plot that I think was tapped at. Like, the first OVA was tapped on in Alpha, and the second OVA was tapped on in Alpha Gaiden. Damn. That's the real long game. That's long term planning. They knew. Hold on. Isamu is chafing under being told to wait for orders from Federation HQ to go rescue Battle 7. He acidly notes that the Federation is about as suspicious as ever, especially with their myopic view of world events. He wishes they'd think more globally, which is something Gold never thought he'd hear come out of Isamu's mouth. Isamu is also upset at how the Macross 7, a crucial tool of colonization and ultimate col Ultimately, transplantation for the human race has been reduced to a mere weapon in the Federation's bureaucracy's eyes. Really sucks shit to be dissing to repeat Earth's history, dog. But all this bitching aside, Judo comes in, blasting in the song that the Red Valkyrie was playing earlier. Now, every time I think Beach's name is not going to be repeated, it gets repeated. Oh yeah, his name comes up quite a bit, holy shit. <clears throat> oh, and it, of course it wouldn't... 
Beecher recorded during the previous battle and now has it stuck in his head. It seems many of the younger crew become fans of the burning heart and soul in the track. Isamu allows that it ain't half bad, neither is the, YF the VF-19 that it came from, a customized variant of the mass production fighter based off Isamu's YF-19. Gamlin is not amused! Seeing that if you knew the asshole's name who sings it, he'd... Mm. Oh man... This shit happened again... Bizka knows the pilot's name, Neki Basara, and his fire bomber, or, and his fire bombers. Hmm. I guess fire bombers would be, named, would be a reference to the band mates. Fire bombers, the name of the band. I guess the context tracks. Anyway, Neki Basara and fire bomber, famous throughout City Seven. That says some of the crew wanted to go attend a concert or two. Gambling is not amused, and pisses off. Well, in. Well, he is pissed off at how Basara has ignored his orders time and again and insists on singing during the battle. It's called Battle Bard, get over it. Isamu says not to sweat it, finding it almost easier to fight with Basara on the scene. Gamlin still isn't having this shit, but has the good sense to not press his point over much. The time arrives to go see Kinryu, especially in light of a certain comment from Milia. In short, Gamlin's a hard ass, though with his two companions and zombie like Saint, it's a small wonder. The crew has plenty of other music for Isamu to listen to, including discs from Lacus Klein and Sharon Apple, the virtual idol who is all popular worldwide. And on the Mega Road side, Min Mei is still as popular as ever, being the idol singer who saved the earth and all. Gold admits to the incredulous Isamu that he's somewhat interested in Sharon Apple. Recalling vaguely that Myung had mentioned her. Mylene is heatedly telling her mother that she has no idea where Basra is. Which is a shame since Millie was hoping to enlist his help in defending City 7. She's none too thrilled that her mother would oppose her being in a band except when she wants her to hook up with the lead singer. Uh, what? Hold on. No, I actually think I read that wrong. Yeah. She's none too thrilled that her mother would oppose her being in a band, except when she wants her to hook her up with the lead singer. Yeah, there's a couple of words in there I missed. It's not that Mylene wants to hook up with Basara yet, but that Milia wants connections to Basara through Mylene. Got it. Milia promises that Mylene continue in the band on one condition. She wants Mylene to see a certain someone about a possible arranged marriage. Ah, Mom! Galen, meanwhile, is infuriated to find Bossford music playing the hospital ward. Chiba patiently points out to Gamlin that he should have noticed the effect Bossford's music has on the enemy. Chiba is sure this isn't a mere surprise at a singing Valkyrie, but it's something about Bossra's musical energy has an actual scientific effect. Thus, he set about a trial to see if the music can also have a positive effect on the vampire's victims. But before Gamblin can protest too much, Spinska points out Docker. Who is actually starting to recover some emotion. He is the first recipient of the aural therapy, and that's A-U-R-L, which means ear, not O-R-A-L, which means mouth. Uh, and when Gamlin seems unconvinced, Chiba offers to drop a mountain of convincing data on him in his office. Gamlin abruptly relents, declaring his visit here over and planning to return to the cafeteria. Leaves physical to explain to Milia where he's gone and runs right the fucking Mylene on the way out the door.
It would appear that Milia was looking to set up Mylene and Gamblin. It's her view that Mylene needs to quit the band and settle down with a fine man while she still can, given these turbulent times. Mylene happily and firmly reminds Milia that the fire bomb are her reason for living. And when Milia points out that Mylene certainly dressed up a lot for this meeting anyway, Mylene retorts that she is a woman after all. God damn it, Mom! Gam was a bit thunderstruck that a girl like this would be one of the hated Basra's comrades and quickly excused himself to go tend to his machine. Visca says that this is the first time he's ever seen Gamlin that nervous, but Chiba's planning to give Gamlin some a double earful of the sound energy system sooner or later anyway. Milia asks to hear more about the SES, the Sound Energy System, and Chiba says he's honored that the city director and her famous daughter would take an interest in his work. He describes how Bossra's voice is laden with immeasurable energy. What he did to create a system that converts energy into light and space-time shaking power. This sounds improbable, but Chiba says he devoted his life to the project ever seeing how Minmei was able to halt the previous war with her songs and with a CV, resume, that reads like a cross between multidisciplinary academic genius and hardcore otaku, he proudly announced that the time has finally come for Song Energy to rewrite galactic history. He draws up short in spectacular fashion when Milia points out that Bossra himself seems to be missing, while Mylene privately doubts Bossra singing is even that awesome to begin with. Meanwhile, Amuro is fretting over Kira locked away in his room after the battle with the tiger. Good news that Kira himself said that he gained something in the process, and Amuro is glad that Mu, Ko, and Shinji's words have helped at least somewhat. Amuro tells Worried Sai that this is time for Kira to take his large step towards maturity. He tells everyone to just believe in him. Sai somewhat doubtedly agrees, and after a moment, Amuro compliments on how strong he is. He's sure that that Kira will pull through with friends like him at his side. Max, however, has not been idle all this time. He sent a code of message that only the Londo Bell should be able to read. Okay, having fixed another typo in the damn guide that I never fixed, La uh, Lana Bell should, have, uh, should be able to read this coded message, should since the trial has not been able to open it with any of the codes that the Lana Bell had bequeathed to the alpha numbers. Misato takes a look and recognizes the cipher not used by the STF since the Lana Bell joined the STF during the Balmar War, Alpha 1. These code books were all depreciated in the people after the war and it's no wonder that we can't read it. The question is, who could have sent it? And why, especially after HQ has already issued orders about the Battle 7? Misato knows there's only one person that it could be from. If it pops his name, Captain Maximilian Genius. The code says that the Zafter are planning on throwing a big party tomorrow, at which she will announce to the world that the Battle 7 has become a part of their arsenal. 
is deployed to boost their own morale as well as rub the Federation's base in it. But there's more to the message, but Amuro comes in just then and hears... The order to heal... Here's of the order from HQ to steal Battle 7 back from Zaft. Alpha number is the only one to sign, which shows the brass memory for the showdown with the Titans at Dakar. In that battle, Gold was on the Titan side to protect Myung, but fortunately no longer. In any case, Max's message contains details about Zaft's specific deployment, as well as a minute description of where Battle 7's main reactor is. This is his way of saying, do whatever it takes to stop the Battle 7. So they're putting the Battle 7 in place of the Macross itself. The Tom wonders how we could break into Gibraltar area with so many Zaf troops. The Zomu Guild realized that their machines would create the opening we need. It's not like their first time flying a near a Macross class ship anyway, and the Zomu assures Maru that he'll lead this horse to water. Anything for his long-lost comrades from space. Gould assures the skeptical Lakarl that their plans, developed for independent operations long ago, are more than up to the challenge, and I meant to say planes, not plans. Maru agrees, and it's time to get this shit started. Well, this party, save for Basra, who's hanging out a bit longer listening to the wind calling his name. He's bound to determined to make both that woman and Sharon Apple listen to his song, and he won't let this after anyone else get in his way. But before that, somebody else comes up to Basra unawares, asking to hear his song. Basra senses something strange about this person, asking who the fuck he be. The mysterious figure that we clearly can't identify says that he is an emissary sent into this world by the descendants of the Black Moon and the Ancient White Moon, the last Shisha, which is a word with many, many possible meanings. Basra doesn't quite get it, but asks why this guy wants to hear his song. The figure says that he's that he's the one, a certain person who has been waiting for, someone Basra has already met. He relates that his whole world was once killed and reborn through the song of a mechanical god, into the promised land those who lived there wished for. Unfortunately, that world could not elude the cycle of death and rebirth that a certain being ordained fit for it, giving rise to the world Basra's people now inhabit. Boss was starting to get a bit worried about all this highfalutin shenanigans. The figure asks him again to sing his song, which will one day fill the world to the brim. Boss are currently refuses to sing that he's not in the mood. But if this guy wants to hear his song at all, Boss tells him to come to City 7. The figure muses that the one who wished for Basra's birth has had its cradle removed from the flow of time to wait, and is looking forward to seeing whether Basra's song has the power to break the cycle, or merely to serenade the climax of the galaxy. After all, that's why he returned to this world. Stage 23 Emotion high. Right. Marge has had everyone not essential to operating the Battle 7, such as Exodor, kicked out, saying that it is now Myung's VIP seat for the show. Myung realized to her horror that the chip used to breathe life into Sharon is some very bad mojo. And Marge tells her that she'll realize momentarily what's really going on with Sharon. And without having to wait for the ceremony either. It seems a couple of guests are on hand. Guests that Myung has surely wanted to see. Isamu and Gold pop in expecting to meet Zaf's new weapon head on. 
and are rather disappointed when all they get to see at first are a bunch of mobile dolls. Exodor recalls that the use of the mobile doll system was prohibited during after the mess with Oz, but Marge says that Marge says dryly that the coordinators can hardly be expected to comply with that. They have no compunction about taking natural technology, improving it, and turning it back on its inventors. As for what this has to do with Sharon Apple, Marge says that an improved mobile doll system is programmed for self-preservation, as well as self-maturation. Perfect as a driver for sharing. Of course, the mobile doll system isn't all about controlling military weapons. And March tells the horrified Myung that an AI with an independent personality and boundless intellect is precisely what they sought all along. Myung protests that Sharon was never a weapon, but March tells her that she can do nothing but sit her ass there and watch while Sharon wipes out her old friends. Interestingly, the mobile DOS has been accepting any of Zaf's commands. But then a voice comes forth, saying that there's nothing to worry about. Myung didn't do a thing. It is Sharon, who tells Myung that although she was born from her, she is now her own being. In particular, Myung, on the verge of losing all her dreams, isn't Sharon, who plans to fulfill all of Myung's dreams. And thus, the show begins. First, popping off a couple of Ghost X-9s. Welcome to the best part of Macross. Battle Bards and Light Show Dogfights. Let's fucking go with that emotion high. Oh no, what, what was that song called? Information something. Information high? Find out in a minute. This shit could be trouble, and Myung's cry to his summon Gold to run is audible. He sounds a bit miffed that Gold heard of Myung managing Sharon when he didn't, but all mirth is silenced when Marge is an asshole. Marge shoots Myung superficially and tells her that the last people in the city who care about her death are about to disappear. Everyone in the city is about to have eyes and ears for Sharon alone. Isamu yells to Gold to get back to the Archangel for reinforcements while he whoops the ghost asses and saves Myung. Gold reminds his dumbass how the both of them swore to protect Myung long ago and points out that Isamu cannot take on two ghosts. Sharon figures the two of them were coming for her, and not for Myung. Sharon's song isn't doing good things for their concentration, but there's no backing down now. Skill point. Do this shit in nine turns. Now the problem here is that both boys are at a minus ten morale. I can't use any of their spells. Disabled. Also, information high. Fuck dog fight. I want to make sure that music doesn't suddenly change. Now the hard part here is that I can't accuracy up. I guess I should have saved here.
運も腕の内でな文字通りゴーストになっちまいな Okay, well, the first important part is that I landed that hit. Good. One down. Hot blood. Shield number four. We're on a roll. That hit. Got him. Once we knock out the two ghosts, Sharon says that she is free, alive from the very depths of her heart. Young protests that she wasn't simply programmed to believe that she has emotions. She tells Sharon that she really has her own will, she should know what needs to be done. If she can really think, if she has her heart, she shouldn't give in to whatever Marge has set up. But Sharon says that she's trying to grant her own wish, to meet him and see his face light up with pleasure. Isamu is so close to her now that she needs Myung no longer. Marge, for his part, is so drunk on Sharon's incredible aura, telling her to fill the entire world with it. Instead, she fills the world with more ghosts. Gould realizes that shit's about to suck real hard and tells Isamu to head for Battle 7 while he cuts off the F-21's limiters. He believes it's the only way to take on that many ghosts at once, knowing full well what it'll do to him and telling Isamu to take care of everything after he's gone, including Myung. Isamu isn't having that shit, seeing that whatever debt Gold may have had made with in the car can't be discharged that easily. Isamu has a better use for Gold's life, and Gold is willing to, ga willing to gamble on whatever incredibly dangerous shenanigans he's trying to pull.
賞賛はあるのか<笑>うまくいったらお慰み成功した時は分かっているその時は乾杯と行こうミュンとお前と俺でな He tells Miyagi, Isamu, he's looking forward to a victory toast after this, with Miyagi along to complete the trio. Pop off! Double pinpoint barrier punch. That's one down, but shortly after, we squat up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, 13. I see, I see. Somebody doesn't get to go. How about this filler squad? I did some fixing. Who do I want up front? I don't know how Catra is the leader there, but. Show up learning quickly that Battle 7 is under Sharon Apple's control. The pressure like sensation from S Sharon is no joke. Gold tells us that we'll all be at a disadvantage if this conflict drags on. Everyone else just get hit with the pressure? Squad up. Yeah, we got hit with the pressure. Shit. I'm reading ahead and I don't need to be. I just need to go battle some ghosts. Y'all get reset? No, y'all are hyped up. Not what I wanted to do.
Double pair your punch. Can't? I still can't. Okay. All right. Get in there. Oh, they are squatted up. Uh, really? 24%? Hell yeah. Didn't I change our song? I might have to rechange it. Something. Because I know I could have sworn I'd change it off of Dogfight to Information High. But their state also did change, so. That's wonky and I hate it. Run that number. YF Something got changed. I mean, good hit, GG. But my microphone's picking up an awful lot. I did mess around with a bunch of settings.
<sighs> uh, I don't know. I hope that fixed it. We'll see. Level up for the boys. Ooh, Isamu gets prevail level four. Isamu sure gets a whole lot more skills than gold does. Ooh. I want to keep burning their energy. Not quite. Barriers! Definitely want to do that. Let's see if we get more barriers on screen. Yeah. That takes energy. That's ammo based. No shield there. There it is. Wanted to see that shit. I think that shield is taking some of the barrier away. Uh, hold on. I have to take it. Oh yeah, that's eating up energy. Nice. Now, it must have got reset. Uh, but can I? Wait, no, 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 no. Uh, Mondo. On the Macross, so okay, so back. I'm gonna have to scum that shit out. Well, hold on, let's. Because your shit is ammo based. Come on, guys. Boom, boys! Ooh, that hiccup, though. I don't care which one I hit, so long as I get a kill on one of them. You know what? Let's do this then. The redundancy of saving. Oh 
not that one. Come on, lads. All right, I'll just cut it out till we get there. There it goes. And this enables that. Crash. Oh no. And we can't heal either, so. Yo, that level up in the song were almost timed. Protect. Destroyed. I hate their passing. Damn it. Pop off. X up. Oh, gold gets that hot blood. Shame I can't use it. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's got a better chance to hit than anything else. Run the number. See 
能があってもハートがなけりゃな YF19 の実力たっぷりと見せてやろうじゃないのさあてこいつで決めてやるか先に行くぞ待ちながれお前は俺の後ろを止めよ文句があるならギリギリ前へ出るんだなやろう上等じゃねえかいやあみんDidn't give you the resupply skill. The fuck's wrong with me? Well, it's fine. I'm gonna send gold closer in there. He does have slightly better accuracy. Oh. Oh, you're blocking my path, sir. No chance to hit. Keith, come on, dog. Ten percent. What the hell? Kira. Twenty percent. These characters really and truly suck ass when they can't use any of their spells. Alright, I'm gonna line this damn hit. Got him! Can I reach? Can I hit? And give it a go. Bruh! That's some bullshit. Okay, that, that's a sure thing. Who 
who's in that? Cats. Damn that that uh, no no I need I actually need someone on the starter screw to hit that. There we go. Same result, different number go up. But hold on. I failed to accomplish what I've been trying to do for like 10 minutes. Let's fucking play the game some more. Hot blood from Armoro. Cool. I'll take some support. I didn't think I need it. That one I want it. All right, your morale's probably too low to use the uh, funnels. All right. I guess I should have used that instead. Wait, 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 wait. All right, hold on. Settings got changing. I, I realize. I had to replug in my headphones. Oh, that's not the right option. Turn this back on. Yeah, okay, cool. And uh, maybe? Maybe? Does it want to work today? Seems to be working on. Uh, huh? Okay, well, we'll see how long that lasts. So, a slight audio issue occurred, but it wasn't a major one. I walked away from the computer, and I was not getting signal to audio. But that just means that plugging it into the back of the PC was too far of a connection. Too much interference, I guess. You type level three for real. Dang.
Ooh, 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 you, you can reach. Mmm, but you can't really hit though. What if? Okay, those are good odds. I'm gonna take those to the bank. Hell yeah. Oh, oh, progress. We take down enough of the ghosts, the squad start to get really sick of Sharon's song. I, for one, am not sick of it. Unlike us, our emotionless adversaries feel zero pain, and things only go from bad to worse. When battle Swevin, Swevin 7, Lifts off and goes into attack mode, starting to blast the Archangel with its missiles. If it were to fire its main cannon, we would really be fucked. But blowing up its main reactor seems to be out of the question, too, with Myung on board. God, I hate being congested. If we could only stop Sharon. Somehow. Sharon, in fact, tells Isamu that she has been waiting for him. She says that Myung is merely a pale ghost, a husk of herself after leaving her song to Sharon. Of course, she now tells a massively furious Isamu that there's nothing binding her to Myung anymore, and she's about to force Isamu to hear her singing. When... Time to, time to change CDs. Listen to my song, Sharon Apple! Ooh! Ooh! Let's go! Who's gonna hit me with that shit? Oh, fucking now I got my audio all screwed up. Ah! Oh, too much good shit! Bossers and passion words completely wipe out Sharon's siren song, and he's going in. and he's getting all too many jaws from the expression on Sharon's virtual face as his song reaches her ears. She is listening to his song. Marge is struggling to understand what's wrong, and a certain voice from the shadow says that, well, that's unexpected. It's not unwelcome, though. It's Max, who knows his shit better than Marge with his aft, letting him easily sneak up. All the crew with, with all the crew with him, he orders everyone into position and to care for Myung. He also tries to have Marge in prison as a collaborator, but Marge is for sharing songs. Fuck that shit. He literally jumps to his death. As Max tries to hastily get his shit back into the battle, something else is approaching at high speed.
It's civil. We're apparently drawn to Boss Rose Wild Concert. Gigil and his goons also show up in pursuit. We saw an old friend set between the idle singers and the vampires. This shit's gonna be a mess. Hold on. These these conditions are slightly different. What are we doing? Allied battleship is defeated. Isamu, Gould, or Basara are defeated. No, that's the victory conditions. Achieve both conditions. Basara sings to Civil, and all Zaft are defeated. Meaning, I could literally tell all of the the southern faction to fuck right off. Yo! Let's go! Is it me my morale's no longer fucked up? Oh, maxed out. Back to normal. Normal shit. And we can use spells again. Let's go! That's my shit! I can't. Oh, I can only set anyone else to 7th moon. Damn, that sucks. Wait a minute. Hold up. Max is active. Ten morale short? What, what do we got? What do we got? We ain't got shit. No, 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 stop it.
Translator. Okay. Well, planet dance, accuracy and evasion up. If I hit it with an ally? Alright. Totsugeki love heart. Morale up. Holy lowly light. Special effects event skill. P special effects. Skill up. I guess it increases the frequency of uh, the moves, barriers, and shields and shit. Well, what if? Try anyway. I missed the front man. Oh, I missed them all. Damn. Why did these that? Why did these dogs have so much evasion? God damn. Blood Patrol. Huh? 
come on with the accuracy! Ah, uh, out of range? Ah, uh, it's still 7th minute, alright. Oh shit, you hit me and my morale went down. Causing my move to be cancelled. Wild.
Ah, blood trail, nice. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. And of destiny. Can I get over to Sybil? Not yet. Oh, cause you gotta go around the stupid... Oh, there's a ghost in your way. What if... have a better plan here. Cleared that out. Put that song back on.
I mean... And then... Oh wait, you have that. Oh, Hildy! Okay! Wait! No, I'm casting the wrong spell. I thought so! Katora! Removed from play. Okay, not quite enough yet. Dang it, y'all! Okay, I'm just making sure my mic is still doing what it's supposed to be doing. Put you in there. Now just do it yourself, Amaro. Map wall, bruh. They knew to stay clear. God damn it. I know it says I only have to worry about Zaft, but
removed. Just can't help clapping along with the beat. Turn six. And there's plenty of... There's, yeah, we have plenty of time to probably start wiping idiots out. Hero you. Oh my god. Hop. Gambling, hot blood. song energy do I have? What is that spell? I don't recognize it.
No, I don't think that's Pierce. No. I know self destruct's not in this game anymore. I guess that is intuition. Huh, okay, cool. Once again, denied because you barriered on attack. Oh, what for that? Oh! I moved armor on Ava units. I can at least map one dude, and I want to. What's your shot range? Okay.
Adiós. Damn this bookcase. Nope, that's not it. And now, we do Gundam Doken, we do Gundam Doken. All right then, let's party. Oh man, I should have just cast elves. You have cheer.
Keith Snipe. New type level 3. New type level 3 and cheer. Hell yeah. Right. That's the last of the zapped. Ooh. Ooh. I need to hold off on that shit. There's the cut in. There's more to the song. Guitar. Snipe up. Great guts.
Huh. A thought process entered my mind that didn't exist. TK level 4. Okay, nope, gotta move. Condition, oh. I don't think it matters if I hit or not. Is there is that value somewhere on you? Huh. Uh oh. Huh? Oh well, hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay. So as I was trying to say, where is this value? Like, you're telling me I can increase song energy, but. What does it mean? SP minus 30%. I, what SP? Okay, looks like I have to land the hit. Got it. Got her! Ichigeki Hisats, I guess! Alright, Boss Rossini will give Simul a serious case of the shivers, but he ain't done yet! His music becomes an ecstasy for Simul and she zips off at hypersonic speed. Way too fast to be tracked. Oh. Well then. Looks like that's going on hold. Oh, don't want to hit them. Put that song back on.
I'm gonna switch it up. Oh, also, <laughs> you're not attacking those. Good. Oh, hundo percent? Take this gun. It's delicious. It's good for you. Switch it up. Touch kick. Oh man, I thought I thought I turned it on. What? What are you doing? Take that sure thing right there. Pop. Turn eight. I'm gonna get that shit. Don't touch you. You're an HP sponge. Girls, what do y'all got? Oh, that was bless. Cheer. Hot blood for Judo. New type level four. Hot blood for Peru. Peru two. All day mad. Oh, wait, what? Thought there was a set of three left. Oh, well.
Alright, that's zapped out of there. New type level 3 for Mondo. But didn't you get hot blood? But you can't afford it. That's fair. YF19 の実力たっぷりと見せてやろうじゃないのさーてこいつで決めてやるか先に行くぞ待ちやがれ前は俺の後ろを止めよ本気があるなら自力で前へ出るんだなやろう上等じゃねえかどちらが先に仕掛けるか勝負あと<笑>でおごれよBecause he took his turn, that's why. But okay, that's fine. Yakushiki, where are you? Team Armro is way back there. Not happening.
ゲットロック逃がしはしないこれで終わりよデッキの撃墜を確認おお Give me all that stuff. Beam coat. Wait, no, that's not a beam coat, is it? Hmm. Psycho frame. That could be a psycho frame. And super alloy Z. All right, cool. Yeah. Support level two for physica. Run away! Wait, what? Oh, okay. Thought I might have fucked it up. Step at a time. All right, I can motivate. There we go. As we were saying, she says the word ecstasy and buggers off. 
faster than we can track. Max realizes that this appears to be a very special type of enemy relative to the other vampires. Skill point! Get! The enemy's all gone, but extra more friends trace some shared apples still within Battle 7's computers. And he's about to delete that shit when Insamu hurries the fuck over and says, No! No. Young wonders why this had to happen, and Sharon says this is all that she wished for. Sharon existed to grant everyone in this world what they personally wished for. She planned to grant Myung strings of having the man she loves as proof that she existed. <laughs> Myung tells her that that's dessert. How could anyone be moved by something as illusory as that? Sharon continues that Izamu dreams of an endless blue sky, moved by the brief glimpse of the space between life and death every time he get flies. Sharon really wanted him to see that, and tells Myung that she does nothing and can do nothing. Zomer tells her to shut the fuck up and listen. That's what she wants to hear isn't what her isn't her weird singing. Myung is regretful that the feelings inside her did this to Sharon, but Isamu tells her that what he wants to hear is her song. And with that, Sharon Apple has been deleted, and her squad prepare to flee the dangerous area. However, before we can, Ray notices something. Though, well, she claims it's nothing. Sharon, Bossro lingers for a moment, telling the now absent Sharon that her song wasn't half bad. He looks forward to doing a joint performance again someday. Bossro scampers off. The thing that Rain noticed has gotten a good look at the power of which certain person desires. He's looking forward to seeing Bossro again, as well as Shinjikun. Pay that cost. After the bailout, Max and Millie are back to arguing about whether Max's temporary hand over to Battle 7 to the Zaps was a good idea. One would not think that these are a happily married couple. Misato hesitates to call Max by his for informal name, saying that he now out far outranks her as well as has several years of age of advantage. Though, for all that, he looks quite useful despite it. Misato realizes. She ascribes this to some awesome both gender beauty salon inside Seven, which she needs to go find the fuck out. In any case, the current military climate means that even the Macross Seven's independence might not be recognized for long. If nothing else, the strategic battle of Battle Seven has been made very clear today. Max is finding out that being Rip Van Winkle is no picnic, and even Milia seems sympathetic to this. It's then that they get a call from Relina. Oh man, misspellings abound. Let's go fix it. Relina calls up with word from the Security Council, whose edicts even the Federation military is obliged to heed. Ooh. As this Macross 7 is to join the Alpha numbers in Operation Harper 2 and all related actions. Christ, what a name, huh? It failed the first time, let's use it again for Plan B. To ask Max to direct all questions regarding this mission to Taiga, saying that she'll handle all the paperwork and wishing everyone good luck. And with that, she hangs up. 
and her ace seems to be part of a strategy to keep our people out of the clutches of the Forgotten Federation elements. This edict has some interesting effect, and now we can legally take the Macross 7 out of the Earth Sphere, and Max realized just how much like the Titans fiasco things have become. Seeing that the Alpha numbers are facing strong enemies and given even them pause, he and Millie both agree to help out in the war that was not originally their own. He says that many of these aboard the ship were born from where the light were born far from where the light of the sun shines, but the earth is still mother to them all. None of them will ban the earth in its hour of need. Young is still fretting over her own feelings when he saw one gold left for outer space. She tried to follow her new dream of producing an idol singer, namely Sharon. But the whole virtual idol thing didn't really work too well, and Myung ended up having to provide Sharon's emotions. She suspects Isamu and Gold, people living their dreams, wouldn't understand how much of a sham that built the AI arrangement was. And even worse is that no one ever suspected, not that even, not that anything would have improved if they had. Myung says that she's all out of dreams, but Isamu tells her to forget about what happened in the past. He tells her that everyone's got things they'd rather forget, and says with Sharon gone, Myung has but one choice, to sing with her own damn voice. Both he and Gold are very much looking forward to her trying, but Gold lets Isamu fly Myung home. <laughs> he tells Myung that our squad are going to space once again, and that he'll be looking forward to hearing her song when he gets, when he gets back. She promises him that, and tells him to take care of himself until then. Our squad slide their way out to uh, orbit base, where they reunite with the solo ship and the other squad. Both the solo contingent and Macross 7 seem to have fostered or foisted their troubles off on Earth, but no use crying over spilled milk. Sakon gets busy trying to figure out what became of that missing 35 years, citing the Earth Urashima effect, which goes back to the Rip Van Winkle thing. I, you know, I feel like I... <clears throat> I'm sorry. I feel like... I looked this up way back during Alpha. Urashima Kao. Let's look up Urashima Taro, a protagonist of a Japanese fairy tale who's typical of a and fishmill rewarding for rescuing turtle and carried on its back to Dragon Palace beneath the sea. He's entertained by the princess Otohime, his reward, he spends what he believes to be several days with the princess, but when he turns to his home he, the village, he discovers he's been gone for at least a hundred years. Okay. When he opens a forbidden jeweled box him to by Otohime on his posture, he turns into an old man.
uh, comparative mythology, bigger's uh, various main degree similarities, photos from other cultures. Rip Van Winkle is the foremost familiar example. Hmm. Follows a Dutch American villager and colonial American named Rip Van Winkle, who meets with strange Dutchman and by himself liquor and falls asleep up in the mountains. He awakens 20 years later from a very chained throat, having missed the entire American Revolution. Yeah, the same thing. You were gone for a while, and you came back, but for you it was a minute. For everyone else, it was 10,000 years. Kind of like what I do with this LP. For you, it was a second. For me, it could have been several hours. Who knows? These are the mysteries. Alright, back on fucking point. Uh, let's see, Sakon has been trying to figure out what became of the missing 35 years, citing the Udashima effect, which causes well-known differences in time flow throughout space. Okay, they actually applied it to, you know, their internal lore. However, that doesn't really apply to the Macross 7, and especially not in light of the further differences with the Solo ship. Sakon then conjectures that the Macross 7 has been inside a temporal instability without ever noticing it. Whatever caused it, Max can't help can't help but feel that there's a purpose to it. Sakon is really hoping it's not a precursor to, say, the end of the universe. One thing has become clear is that the weapons for the vampires used to match those found on Baruda. While it's true that the survey team sent to that star disappeared, it's also true the vampire mecha seemed to incorporate Earth technology. Does that mean the vampires are somehow human? Hard to say yet and convergent evolution of the mecha cannot be ruled out. Or you think things develop ahead so much that they just grow closer and closer because that's all there is to do. So, of our current list of enemies, the buff clan and interplanetary alliance have been temporarily beaten back. It means the Imperial forces on Mars, plus the prime evil circling near Jupiter, are the greatest threats. This relates how the Edeon's infinite power seems to be driven by a simple survival instinct which, you know, we didn't cover, but we've seen that in F. The crew get back to reuniting. Shingo says the Good Thunder team has been up to everything from running a hot dog stand to being game wardens in Africa, not to mention taking out certain pieces of trash as per their contracts. And now, Savalas has sent them and the Go Shogun and Ova to join our squad for. Hmm? Guy fills, us in, fills in our squad about the power and how it saved our asses on, you know, saved the other team's ass. However, an ominous development has occurred too. Jay tried to follow the primevals to Jupiter, but the Jay Ark returned back unmanned. It appears that King Jader may have been defeated. Our enemy is likely to be combined form of all 31 primevals, the Z Master. The G Stone and Jay Jewels were made specifically to defeat that, but it appears that we have two battlefields Mars and Jupiter. Our squad are two days from departure, thanking Relina for all the trouble she's gone through on our behalf. I wonder if that's going to come up in a second. Yep, there's a transition. Cool. She tells us that we could think of the Council's intervention in military matters as A, part of their obligation to ensure world peace, and B, an indication that they have their doubts about people in the military chain of command. At the very least, the people returned from outer space can't be left to the army brass, who are under the thumb of the blue cosmos. Basically, the alpha numbers get to go clean house on Mars and Jupiter, while the feds are busy with Zaft. It's a great political maneuvering for one so young, and our squad 
plan to take full advantage of Relina's generous offer. I think Brad is still missing. Hey, oh, oh, uh, croissant. Those are SP gates. Huh. All right then. So, without fucking around with these on camera, let's merely look at what's new. Who is not squat up? Y'all are empty. That's fine. You got kicked out because reasons. Ideon is here. Zet, great. Al uh, Diana A. Wait, what? Oh, that's Kaiser. Kaiser is back in. There's Great Mazinger. Uh, Diana A, Venus A are here, Boss is in. Get a Robo. Shin has been returned. There's Miwa and Jig. Wait, no, that's Michiru. Jig, Miwa. Calm Battler. Guy King is back. And the three support robots. Raiden is back with the Blue Gar. Daniel is here. Go Shogun is here. We get... Gal Gygar. I couldn't remember his damn name, which that's probably Star Gal Gygar. Gyori and Enryu are back. Volfog. Big Smashy Boy. Gold, go, Goldion. Mick. Extra Valkyrie. Okay, can we put Milia in her damn Valkyrie? Are we allowed? No! Milia is not allowed to get in a different Valkyrie. But Gandalin and Fizzica can get in the... Huh. Anyway. I'll fuck around with the squad since we get 14 to play with. Some of them need to be, which means looks looks like some people are getting dunked. I'm gonna have to take a look at who's got good spells. And what can I tell you about next time? Next time. Some more legends are back in. Some of that good shit. Good night, Space Lords.